Hey guys, SK here, back with another Clash Royale video. As I find myself saying that after almost two weeks, a week and a half of inactivity, I wanted to apologize, haven't been posting. I've been feeling really low over the last week and a half or so, really stressed out. Um, I think a lot of it is to do with university because I am moving away and starting in a completely new country in just over a month. And I'm a very anxious person, so there's a lot of new stuff um, and things that I'm not familiar with that are going to be happening, and I guess that really stressed me out. But also just in general, I've been in kind of a weird state um, of mind where I'm just kind of questioning a lot of things and the meaning behind things. And it's kind of hard to describe and explain, and I wouldn't really be able to without like making a video of its own or something like that. I don't really want to do that either. Um, but yeah, I haven't really been playing the game either for the last week and a half, two weeks. Um, if I showed you my other account... There wouldn't be any battles on it, but I'm finally feeling a little bit better. Been trying to play the game today um, and finally felt up to it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be trying to make another video today. Going to be playing this deck, one of the best expo decks, if not the best expo deck in the entire game, I'd say. Um, as we found the first match against Rion, let's give him the good luck. Um, but yeah, I guess I just... I uh, wanted to... Say, I guess I don't really need to apologize, because I mean, I did also say that I'd mainly be posting... Um, when I felt up to it, and I guess this is just a very extreme version of that where I just didn't really feel like do doing anything um, But yeah, okay, we do see a golden knight and thankfully my queen just barely survives um, So yeah, I haven't played in quite a while and also haven't commented either. So hopefully stuff goes okay um, We will see um, But yeah, thanks guys because usually when I do talk about stuff like this um, People are very supportive. We do see a cannon cart and mortar so my opponent just spent nine elixir um, and Expo is going to lock on a tower, so this is a really good situation for me, I feel like. I'm gonna go Skeleton just to distract the Cannon Cart for a bit. I thought Cannon would lock on, but sadly didn't. Um, but we can probably just Queen. I'm gonna Queen now, and Gold Knight comes down, but gonna pop Ability. And Dash would be kind of annoying if it dashed onto the tower, but either way, we still got a very nice trade, I'd say. We are up a thousand damage or so in the right, and Fire Spirit was really good there because I recognized he just spent his Spear Goblins and kind of spent quite a bit of Elixir on that offense as well. Felt like he didn't really have anything good or cheap in hand, so just Fire Spirit, you know, does more damage than a Fireball. Very good card, and puts us even further in the damage lead, but um, yeah, very interesting Mortar Cannon Cart bait deck it looks like, although I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to pre-cannon in a way, so this deck uh, is... Kind of similar to 3 Pro Expo Cycle. I mean, it is obviously an Expo deck. He does have a Fireball, so Fireball's the cannon off. Um, I guess I'll just Skeletons. Unfortunately, missed it for the guard, but gonna Expo with this now, and he's, yeah, definitely gonna cart, so I do have to let it die. I feel like this deck is played, again, pretty similarly in some ways to Expo Cycle, or 3 Pro Expo Cycle, but in other ways it's different as well, because we do have the cannon, um, Archer Queen, you know, different cards. Um, yeah, I guess sometimes I, I'm not sure if I'm, like, saying a good thing to talk about or, like, good commentary, um, but hopefully it's fine. We do see a pretty big uh, push coming in. Unfortunately, Golden Knight dashes everywhere, but, okay, he activates King, which is kind of funny. Um, at least I think that was the Golden Knight, not the Firecracker, but we're just going to Queen to take this Mortar out. And this is honestly not too bad, because I can definitely Expo with this, and he does go for a card, kind of predicting, or knowing that I would set up some kind of offense here. And that is honestly quite unfortunate that my Archer Queen did get taken out um, before it was able to do much to the Cannon Cart. I think it was the Firecracker Splash, but still we are once again in the lead. And it looks like my opponent does not have a Miner in here, so that is definitely good because it doesn't really have too much direct damage. Um, and Gold Knight comes in, thankfully doesn't dash, so you do have to play your buildings pretty high against it in general. Really nice rocket value. So this deck doesn't have the best mortar defense, I think, because cannon will obviously deal with the mortar, but it's uh, very frail, and since we're pretty late in the game right now, I feel like if we do just try and cannon on top of the mortar, he's definitely just going to predict it, as mortar players usually do. Goes for a defensive mortar. Um, he gave the good game, which maybe meant he was giving up, but I don't think so, because he's still playing like with the cannon cart. I'm just going to rocket tower, honestly, because the cart was basically just a dead 5 elixir, because my defense expo took it out in its entirety. Um, kind of messed up the skeleton's timing against the firecracker, but I guess I'll just log it off. And uh, yeah, again, just pre-cannon. So, oh, that's why I was talking about how this deck is similar to Thruprono in some ways. I feel like pre-cannons just feel like pre-Teslas. Like, sometimes the best play with Thruprono is to just pre-Tesla. And pre-cannon is definitely a similar thing. My opponent goes for a pre-log, 
Looks like he was trying to predict my skeletons there, but I went for the knight, so unfortunately for him, couldn't get it off. Gonna go for a log to take out the guards, maybe get a hit with my queen. Um, and either way, actually, this might be rocket range. Yeah, 446, so rocket is gonna take it out. It's gonna be good game. He gives me the well played, so I'll give him the good game as well. Um, just, you know, being a good sport, and I'll give him the good luck as well for the rest of his grand challenge. Um, so we are now 11 and... Two, so one off from the 12 win, but obviously two losses, so it's make or break. That's kind of a weird mortar deck, because uh, Gold Knight makes it kind of annoying in Cannon Cart. I definitely wouldn't have won that, I feel like, if I had 3.0, because Golden Knight is just really oppressive. Maybe I would have, because he didn't have a miner. So again, no real way to get good direct damage on the tower. Um, but yeah, we're going to look for the next match, and hopefully we can find it soon enough, because I'd rather not have to cut uh, the video, if possible, but... Obviously, we are pretty high up in a grand challenge. I guess let's just uh, take a little break from matchmaking there. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting mortar deck again. I actually have not seen a deck like this in a while, but uh, yeah, I've just been playing with this deck. I had some other really nice wins as well in the GC, um, like Giant Graveyard and other annoying matchups as well, though I also lost. I was playing. I was just trying to play some different expo decks for fun, which is what I usually do, like... Uh, just to kind of have fun. Sometimes I make my own decks. Um, but obviously in Grand Challenge, the stakes are higher. Players are better. Uh, we did finally find a match against King Bala. Um, let's give him the good luck and see what he's going to be playing. We will go for Fire Spirit. I think it's a pretty safe uh, starting play. And probably the best one with this deck because it's just one elixir. But it pressures so well. We do see a Barb Barrel. which, And he is leaking. So we could have like some kind of beatdown deck. I think I will go for a Knight because you kind of want to play... Um, in single elixir with an expo deck, and he goes for an eye drag, so I'm just gonna rocket it. This could be a bunch of things, it could be uh, Lumberloon. Okay, he is going to have a miner, so miner, Inferno Dragon, Barb Barrel. He's giving good game for some reason. Um, not sure if he means that, like, I'm already gonna win because he knows what I have. And okay, Royal Giant, Miner. I'm gonna go Queen. I think I have to Fire Spirit on the minions as well, um, and this should fully take out everything. So, Cannon is pretty good against Royal Giant. He does go for a zap, which is uh, pretty annoying as well, um, I guess because he gets another hit, but we are still in the damage lead, and Queen should apply some nice pressure. Um, okay, I tried to pop ability, sadly did not get it back in time, but Log Skeletons will deal with this push pretty well. He does go for a Barb Barrel. It looks like he was actually predicting my Skeleton, so he does get that off, which I guess he wanted to, um, so pretty decent play. But he is, again, going to have to respond to this knight. And this is looking like a terrible matchup. Um, so maybe he was giving the good game like he knew that he hard countered. Because Royal Giant Miner is just pretty ridiculous. Um, I guess I'm just going to go for a queen in the back to take out the miner. And yeah, I'm not sure because uh, he has Bar Barrel as well. He has lots of good counters to the expo, it looks like. He goes for an RG. Um, I guess I'm going to cannon. I think I actually have to rocket here, which is kind of awkward. But like, I don't have a counter to minions in this deck. Like, I really don't, other than the queen. Gonna pop ability, though, and wow, looks like he didn't have enough elixir, it looks like, for that, so I'm gonna give him the well-played, um, sarcastically, and he goes for the zap on the far spirit. I think I might expo here, although, sadly, it is double elixir, so he should be back to RG pretty soon, but I think he's not back to it right away. Uh, but yeah, barbs will get split, so he should be back to RG now, I, I think, because he played... Okay, Miner instead, Barb Barrel. I'm gonna Knight to catch the Barb Barrel, Skeletons to kite the Barbs in the left out of Expo range, but sadly, not gonna be enough because um, the Expo just kinda had too much to deal with there. I think I will go for a Queen, and yeah, this is gonna be really annoying because even though I have a nice damage lead, he has Royal Giant and Minions. Um, or rather, he has Minions, which is like the biggest issue for me. Like, Royal Giants I can defend. But I don't have anything to take out minions except for Queen and Rocket. Fire Spirit doesn't take care of minions if they're behind a Royal Giant. So that's just going to be a big kind of pressure point for me in this match, I guess. So it's going to have to Rocket them, I feel like. like I don't think there's a better play. Um, especially because if I use my Queen, I won't have her in cycle. And he also has an Eye Drag, so this is kind of the biggest downside of this deck, I'd say. And wow, looks like he goes for Barbs. Um... RG in the left, so we're going to have to defend this. Um, Knight Cannon. Cannon is pretty good against Royal Giant, though. Fire Spirit should hopefully jump on everything, and then RG does get a couple hits. Going to have to go for a log, though, and yeah, like this is what I was talking about. I have to cycle back to another Fire Spirit, and I do get the job done, but um, like I took too much damage there, I feel like. 
uh, even though I was able to defend, it's just really hard. And I only have one queen as well, so you know, he has Inferno Dragon. And yeah, like I was saying, this is one of the worst uh, parts of this deck. We don't really have great air defense. So with a deck like this, you know, Inferno Dragon, Minions, Minor, um, it can be a real pain. We're going to pop the ability, and unfortunately the Fire Spirit looks like it got taken out before I could do anything. Um, I think we have to Rocket Cycle, honestly. He goes for Zap. Hopefully I can use the Queen's three-card cycle to my advantage. I don't think there's any chance we're going to get another Expo Connection, though. I don't think there was any chance I was ever getting an Expo Connection in this matchup. And wow, looks like he actually does clip my Barb Barrel, or my Fire Spirit with his Barb Barrel, which is actually pretty well played. Going to have to go for a Cannon. And okay, Fire Spirit was actually not that good because I meant to hit the minions, but he's just going to Fireball. And there's pretty much nothing I can do, honestly. Kind of sucks. Um, just minions, and he's BMing for some reason. I don't know why. I guess I'll just laugh back. Uh, but yeah, I like. I don't know why he would BM with that kind of matchup, but it's whatever. Unfortunately, we are going to go 11 and 3, but um, I, again, just wanted to make a video, like, just kind of coming back, I guess, after the break. Um, and yeah, he's going to be an okay player, I guess. It's kind of a really annoying deck, though. Um, but I guess I will still show my other games. But yeah, like I was saying, the minions there were really the biggest issue in that match, I feel like. And it really showed at the end of triple there. Let's open up this chest, though, see if we get anything nice. Uh, looks like we don't get anything too great, but, I mean, it's 11-win GC chest, so it's still going to be pretty good for only 100 gems. going to be worth quite a lot. But yeah, like I said, um, just wanted to make a video, you know, kind of coming back, and I guess I'll go over some of my other replays, because I did have some pretty nice wins in this GC, I feel like. Um, and I just wanted to make a video just kind of talking about stuff, you know, playing. But found the first match against, or not found the first match, okay, yeah. Like I said, I'm kind of out of my element here. Um, but into the first replay against Dark Evil. And this is going to be kind of a weird giant uh, rage deck. I think he has a pump in here as well. Um, he is leaking right now, and Night Witch comes down. So I could have exploded opposite. And actually, he might have been in trouble if I did that here. But I didn't want to be too risky, so I just went for the safe queen in the back instead. Um, and now I go for the Expo because he plays a Dark Prince, and he does go for a Giant. So, it's kind of interesting because he went for the Giant in front of everything, um, and just, like, kind of built up a huge push. But I get a really nice a Skeleton's retarget on that Mini P.E.K.K.A. there. And here I definitely feel like he should have zapped onto my Expo, but because he didn't, it was actually able to help out against the Dark Prince, and did some damage to his tower as well, so... Uh, and he gives me the well played as well. I really feel like he should have zapped there. Um, he was up elixir as well. But anyways, he does go for a pump. Here, actually, Expo might have been a pretty good play. Because, based on his hand, um, he only has Night Witch and then next up Dark Prince. Like, he can't really arrow zap onto an Expo. It's, there's no way that's worth 5 elixir. Um, so that might have been a good play. But also, it would have been kind of risky because then he would have had a huge elixir advantage from the pump. And then I might have been in trouble on defense, so I guess... I don't know. Also, I wasn't really counting cycle. Like, I haven't played too much, um, or pretty much at all in the last two weeks or so. Um, so, like, again, I'm not playing super well. And, I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to judge, like, how much you become worse. Or how much worse you become uh, when you don't play. But I definitely feel like you do at least a little bit. At least for elixir counting, stuff like that. Um, but I rocketed the mini P.E.K.K.A. there. That was kind of like a knee-jerk reaction by me. I just felt like rocketing it, um, but obviously it was a mistake and he gave the sarcastic well played as well because he can just go for a pump. I kind of forgot he had pump, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, unfortunately Giant just tanks. I can get a nice log in here though to at least get some value on the pump. But he does go for a rage as well, raging the Giant up, which is kind of threatening but I am thankfully able to stop most of it, and now I definitely have to rocket that pump. That was not too bad, I guess, because I am getting damage in both lanes. Looks like he's trying to switch to my left lane right now, so getting damage on the right side can definitely help out in case I want to switch lanes, but also with this deck, he hasn't revealed a big spell at this point. I think, um, I wasn't sure if he revealed his small spells or not, uh, but either way, like in a matchup like this, you can definitely defend. Here, that was just a pretty nice defense, you know, protecting my Archer Queen there. Pretty important because uh, she is a very high value card. And yeah, so. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, since he doesn't have the big spells, I think it can be pretty good. And there, I do get a very nice value uh, Archer Queen. Um, 
And I, I, I keep forgetting to finish my point, but I think it can be pretty good because he can't actually really break through. Like, he doesn't have a fireball or anything um, to get direct damage as long as I defend perfectly. And also, I do take some damage there, unfortunately, by that Dark Prince. But yeah, that was definitely a mistake on his end with that pump because he gave me rocket value and that tower was healthier but it's now weaker and he definitely should have just gone for a pump in the middle so i think that was just kind of an oversight on his end um but here another these defenses are actually pretty tricky because they're pretty stressful when they have a bunch of rage but just with good micro you can defend fine like i was able to defend that pretty well i feel like now expo is a pretty decent option and he actually messes up with that dark prince um so i do actually get a small connection and that's going to put me in the lead but right here i'm going to have to contend with this defense again i do actually get a pretty nice defense off though and the cannon is again putting in a lot of work in this deck i feel like one of the main strengths is the cannon against anything that's not air um like in that rg matchup i don't know if tesla or cannon would have been better actually because i would have had to deal with the minions but either way cannon is just like a cheaper tesla against giant um golem like electro giant it's just a better Tesla, because it's one less elixir and it does pretty much the exact same job. So in these kind of matchups, Cannon is so much better. And Tesla is just not a great card right now, honestly. Um, but yeah, Cannon, again, just, you know, constantly setting up for defenses. And I recognize that he's trying to spell cycle me out. Uh, but as long as I don't take any direct damage, like from his troops, I will actually defend this just fine. Here, I actually get a really nice Fire Spirit Log, and then I can actually just rock it at the very end, which is pretty much going to be my plan. In a matchup like this, I definitely don't think you can get an Expo Connection unless they uh, kind of mess up like with their Giant going all in, have a weird cycle or something, But um, which I could have at the start, like when he pumped. But other than that, you know, it's totally fine in some matchups to just kind of chill out and take Spell Value at the very end and win in Tiebreaker. That's totally a valid option, I feel like, but... Uh, yeah, that was a nice win. Here we have another nice win against Drill. This matchup is really bad. I think he had Cannon Cart in there too. Um, the Giant Skeleton though, all these Drill decks have been starting to run Giant Skeleton and Golden Knight, which is terrible news for Expo because, yeah, he has Cannon Cart here as well, so this is just like a straight up 100-0. Um, here I had decided to be more aggressive. I could have rocketed the Magic Archer, but I wasn't sure what he had, if I would get maybe punished for it, so I decided to just Expo opposite instead because it is a 4 Elixir commitment. I go for the Knight. And then I go cannon here, I think, yeah, because I want to take care of the magic archer, um, but I also wanted to help out against the giant skeleton on the other side as well. It does work out pretty well, actually, because um, he does get the dash off, but I'm able to kill pretty much everything of his, or take out, I guess, not kill, uh, but uh, we do also get a small connection there as well. And now I'm, uh, I think my thought process was he just used his giant skeleton and his golden knight, so... Uh, he probably shouldn't have a great counter in hand, but he does also have the cannon cart, so, you know, just really hard, difficult matchup uh, here. Pretty much impossible to get a connection if they play it right, but I think I was able to get a connection later on. We'll see. Um, but yeah, cannon cart in here as well. Like, Gold Knight cannon cart is usually what they have here, but they don't have a giant skeleton. Like, I feel like they don't have all three of those, usually. Maybe I'm mistaken, because I haven't played in quite a while, but... It's just kind of annoying, like, with a deck like this, I guess. Um, having so many counters, because it's impossible to break through if they play well again. Um, but that is, again, the benefit of this deck, too, because I do have the Rocket. And so, as opposed to having a Fireball... I mean, you can honestly just Fireball nothing if you want to Spell Cycle, but usually that's not how you play 3.0. Usually you want to get Expo Connections, use Fireballs to help you out. I mean, Fireball Cycle is an option, but Rocket Cycle, like I uh, was talking about, is just a much better part of this deck that kind of helps you um, win against matchups where you can't really break through. Um, but here I just go for a cannon into his cannon cart, cannon on cannon action, and I think it fully counters, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, if I went for Fire Spirit, yeah, it actually probably wouldn't have fully countered. Or maybe it would have. Cannon is very strong, um, but he's building a huge push here. I go for a knight and kind of separate it away from my queen because I don't want him to be able to get any dash on everything um, and magic archer does unfortunately get one swing or one uh kind of beam on my tower but i'm still able to defend fine and now i think it's time to just start defensive expoing because in a matchup like this where it's so hard um and difficult to break through 
um, but also difficult to defend. Like they have really heavy duty pushes, the way I'd describe it. Like they have the giant skeleton, they have the golden knight, they have the cannon cart. You really do need the defensive expo help. But here I can get a nice offensive expo sequence. I feel like because I have a defensive expo surviving, and he just used his giant skeleton as well. Um, but here, because he went magic archer, that was kind of my cue to rock it because he just spent another four elixir, and as you can see, I'm only down by about one or so, one and a half, because um, the defense fast would just kind of cleaned it up, so that was really nice. And again, similar to a pre-Tesla, pre-cannons are totally cool, and I, again, just defensive expo. Um, and I think, okay, yeah, so I basically won with Rocket Cycle, not with an expo connection, which is exactly how, uh, the only way you would be able to win, because, like, you're not going to break through against this deck, it's ridiculous. And that's why I think with 3.0, like, this would just be way too difficult. Um, Log was kind of unnecessary, I wasn't really expecting the Fire Spirit to fully take everything out. Gold Knight just kind of went a bit crazy with that dash there, but again, I could defense, I could offense expo since I have a Knight counter pushing, but there's really no point in a matchup like this, I think, because he has Giant Skeleton, he has a uh, Cannon Cart, and I remember thinking in that moment, like, okay, if I miss the Giant Skeleton, then I might be screwed, but thankfully I wasn't because, uh, thankfully I didn't miss it, um, and so, yeah, that's kind of an unconventional play, but it's ki kind of a common theme that you see in matchups like these, uh, where they have, like, a huge thing, like a giant or a royal giant. If they play it same lane and you have a rocket cycle deck and you're going same lane, you can sometimes just rocket the huge troop. So I just rocketed that giant skeleton there. Um, and right now, you know, it is getting kind of dicey with that magic archer getting so much damage on everything and gold knight as well that was really scary gold knight just dashes onto everything is so annoying um especially if he has tornado which he does in this deck because they can just kind of get a nice tornado but he let the fire spirit connect there um kind of messed up actually i don't know what was going on there but now again i just reset with a defensive expo and this is definitely my cue to rocket so i just rocket and fire spirit to make sure i don't want the gold knight to dash onto everything but it still dashes onto my um tower I think kind of annoying, but thankfully didn't get too much damage there, and he did not have a Magic Archer there. I kind of gave the Crying Face because it was like a really hard matchup, but uh, he gave the good game, so I was like, okay, BMing would be kind of toxic, I guess, so I just uh, gave the good game back instead. But yeah, that was a really nice win. Basically, I hopefully showed you guys how to defend a deck like that with this deck, because your win condition is not going to be an expo. Like, you can use it to try and break through like I did a few times, but you're going to have to rocket cycle to get damage against a matchup like that. But yeah, let's show one more replay, I guess. This one is going to be against Lava Clone. And I feel like it's not that easy. I don't know, actually, because I'm not an expert at this deck. I don't really know matchups that well. Um, but I feel like Lava Clone is pretty hard because, one, uh, you only have one air co counter, which is the queen. And two, you have a rocket, not a fireball. So mainly the thing I'm thinking about is a flying machine, but also, like, with Thrupano, you usually do see Fireball being pretty useful against a bunch of different uh, situations against Lava Clone. But here I just go Expo same lane, and I, I could have committed, cycled back to a Queen for that Flying Machine, but I think it wasn't worth it, because I needed to defend pretty well after. So I just go Skeleton's Low to cycle back to my Queen, and it does a pretty decent job. Notice how I'm kind of sniping the support troops first, which is what you always want to do in a matchup like this. Although that Fire Spirit was definitely not the move, and because of that mistake, I had to go Knight Opposite to kind of kite all this stuff away. Um, but Lava Hound is on the tower, so yeah, the, this is kind of hard, because I again, I only have the Queen. I guess Fire Spirit kind of counts as air defense, but it's more like a air support than a card you would just defend with. And then Rocket, I would say, does not really count. Because, like, you're not going to... Like, how can I Rocket this, right? Um, so here I actually take a ton of damage. Um, and I kind of just delayed on the Fire Spirit because I was getting ready, like, mentally to just, you know, go Fire Spirit into Night to tank the support uh, Lava Pup that popped out. But I took a ton of damage there. It wasn't very optimal. But he does let my Knight get a couple hits, which is very useful. And here I decide to go Expo Opposite because I kind of accepted that my tower is probably going to die, and if we do tower trade, I'd rather go, uh, I'd rather get more damage in the healthier side tower, so that I can, like, have both towers pretty weak after. I guess that was my thought process there. But I don't know, maybe it would have been better to go same lane, because then I, tower trading, we could have gone same lane as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but, uh, basically... Usually when you tower trade, you want to be going same lane against Lava Hound. If you go opposite lane, it's pretty bad. 
And there I do try and protect my stuff, but unfortunately a few Lava Pups come in, so that's going to be fireball range. I do try and get a nice expo here with the surviving Queen and Knight counter pushing, but he does cycle back to a fireball pretty well, I think. Um, thankfully though, Queen does take care of the entire mini P.E.K.K.A. and the flying machine, which is very useful. But yeah, unfortunately he gets a pretty good fireball in. And I'm going to be forced to rocket, so this is kind of an annoying situation because both of his towers are like kind of low, but I can't really rocket cycle that easily. Uh, but here I decide to go in, and he goes for a Skarmie clone, which is very good for me because that was a really bad play, I feel like. I think he should have gone for a mini P.E.K.K.A. I couldn't have really defended that very easily. Uh, but instead he goes for that, which just gets taken out by the log in its entirety. And now I get a super high value rocket, so I feel like that's like the only way you're going to defend this stuff with a really nice rocket. Because um, otherwise, like, it's really hard. So I think for Lava, uh, on Lava's side, they should probably be trying to go and spread everything out so I can't get a nice rocket. I guess he didn't really realize that. Or maybe I didn't reveal the rocket yet. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, he probably knew I had it based on the deck. But I do get a really nice connection, though. And just like that, I'm able to... Uh, break through and win against Lava Clone, so I'm not sure if that's a hard matchup or not. I feel like it is, though, which is why I wanted to include it, um, again, because of the reasons I mentioned. But it's probably not super hard, since uh, they might have trouble defending some stuff as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that's going to be about it. Um, so yeah, I haven't uploaded in a while, and I guess if I don't post for a while, I will probably make a community post usually, but this time I didn't. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, take care, and I will see you in the next one. I'm not sure how much I'll be uploading, because um, I'm not so, I'm not feeling 100%. I'm definitely feeling quite a bit better, I feel like, because I'm obviously making a video, and I feel like it went pretty well. Um, I mean, some of the stuff that I think about is, like, uh, thinking a lot about words and their meaning, and just, it makes it kind of hard for me sometimes if that uh, feeling gets really strong. I guess, because then I just start to question, like, the exact definition of every single word that I'm hearing, and it's just, it's a really annoying and really bad situation, actually. It does get pretty bad for me, um, and it makes it really hard to, like, understand things, even though I think a lot of it happens unconsciously, like, you know, understanding words, sentences, and also saying stuff, because, like, right now, I'm obviously not consciously thinking too hard about what exactly I'm going to say. It's just kind of happening, like, if I had to think in my mind about the meaning of every single word I was saying right now, I would not be able to do anything like this, obviously. It just kind of happens quickly. Um, so I guess part of what helped me is was I was really in that state for a while, so I feel like just thinking about every single definition and like synonym and ways to use words every time I heard them, uh, doing it so much, it I guess I realized like I can't really afford to do that, so I just kind of stopped. But I don't know, like... Again, my mind just kind of sometimes does stuff like that, and I really hate it. Um, so it makes it kind of hard to uh, get through things sometimes. But yeah, I guess if you if you stayed this late, um, thank you for still listening. Um, I haven't really gotten to talk about this stuff that much because uh, it feels kind of hard and like abstract. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, like ag again, like just even in this video, I guess I just said a lot of things, right? Like. I talked about, you know, the game and, like, while I was playing and also replays, but then I can't consciously think about the definition of everything. I think, like, you're usually just used to talking and using words and stuff, so... Yeah, I don't know if any of that, what I was saying, kind of makes sense or if it just seems really weird or questionable, but it was pretty rough for me. I'm pretty, pretty thankful that that kind of stopped now, I think, because obviously I'm doing this and I'm not uh, stopping or anything. I'm able to do it, so I'm grateful about that. But yeah, it, it it was pretty hard, so I guess I'm just glad that it's a little bit better. But yeah, I'm not sure how often I'll be posting. I guess if you guys, again, if I do have um, long periods of absence, usually it means I'm like dealing with something like that, or I'm really stressed out, or I'm just really busy. Because when I go to university, I will probably be very busy. Um, I will not be able to upload nearly as much, uh, but I'll probably make an announcement about that when I'm actually closer to leaving and stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess... Okay, that's going to be it now, so thank you guys so much for watching. A uh, pretty long outro, but thanks for listening if you did. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll probably try and upload some more videos, though, because I'm feeling a bit better now. I do want to upload them, because um, it has been quite a while where I didn't. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. 
take care and i will see you in the next one hope you guys have a nice day